Hello everyone. Welcome to a new video on Bash Script. Today we are going to learn 20 essential Bash Script examples. So we are going to talk about how to use variables with scripts, how to use inputs and outputs, then conditional statements with if statements, case statements, loops, do while loops, then how to access data from a file, how to check remote server connection with the Bash Script, how to delete all files, how to backup files, then also we are going to create a sleep timer, then how to use arrays with Bash Script, then also we are going to talk about how to use Bash Script functions and some other string tasks like concatenation, get the length of a string and find and replace strings. Also we are going to use Bash Script to find out if a file is existing in a particular directory also we are going to check some system details like current date and time uptime and disk space also at the end we are going to learn how to count number of files in a particular directory and then let's get our hands dirty so today we are going to learn how to use bash scripts i'm in my home directory so i'm going to create a new folder called bash scripts and go inside it okay now you can see there's nothing inside this folder so we are going to create our first bash script file our first script file is variables.sh then we can edit it with nano editor the first line is shebang line which is a pound sign exclamation mark and forward slash then bin bash so we are going to use variables here so first let's type our topic echo use of variables this line will be output to the screen as the header maybe we can underline that topic like this then let's create a variable called name and assign it a value called maybe john that's it then we can create another variable if you want like let's say place usa maybe and then we can use this variable and output something like you can say john lives in usa so since we use our variables we can use variables here instead of john we can use dollar name then john lives in usa we can use we can replace usa with dollar place and to find the end of the script we can use another echo and tell that end of the script and that's it we need to save it in nano editor we can save it by pressing ctrl s then we can press ctrl x to exit and asking we need to save the modified buffer we can press yes and then press enter okay now if we type ls our variable.sh file is here now we need to give permission to this file here we can type sudo chmod then we can give current user executable permission for variables.sh file okay it's asking our password let's type our password and then that's it if we type ls here you can see now our script file is colored right here our script file is not colored because it does not have executable permissions now it is executable file and it has this color okay now we can execute it by using the command bash and variables.sh or we can use dot forward slash and then our file name too like this as you can see we can see the use of variables and the underlined line then john lives in usa and it indicates the end of his okay that's it so now we are going to go for our second example which is inputs and outputs with bash command line so first we need to create a script file i'm going to name it as inputs.sh we can see it here so now we are going to edit it with nano editor 
first we need to write our shebang line now first let's write our header also i'm going to draw a line below our header so using echo commands we are outputting so we know how to output things with our command line we need to get some input from the user so for that we can use here we can ask a question from our user hi i'm john and what's your name then we can read his input and assign it to a variable like this and then maybe we can output an empty line and we can reply in our conversation hello dollar name nice to meet you like that okay now we can mark the end of our script and that's it we can save and run it remember to make the script executable this way you can assign our inputs file executable permissions then we can execute our script file like this as you can see here it's asking our name you can give a name and now it's outputting hello jessica nice to meet you and end of the script so in this example we are going to use conditional statements with bash scripting so we need to create a new file i'm going to create it as conditionals and next we are going to edit it with nano editor first we are going to write our shebang line and our usual header so under conditional statements we are going to learn how to use if then else statements so in bash scripting it is normal like in other programming language the if then else statement is like if and then we need to give a condition and we need to use then keyword after that if our condition is true what to do it can give a echo and then if our condition is false we need to use a else statement and then what to do if it is not true and at the end we need to tell our terminal our if condition if statements are over to indicate that we use if i keyword then finally we are going to mark the end of our script like that so now let's use this so in our if statement uh, we can check whether something is there or not so let's check if a file exists right uh, we can give a file name here so we are using a variable like dollar file we are using this e keyword to check if it exists this file then if the file exists we output to terminal that yes file exist else if not the file is not there we can tell users sorry file is not there right so what's our file name we can declare our file here file equals maybe let's say abc.txt right if there's abc.txt file it will say yes file exists otherwise it will say sorry file does not exist okay let's save and run it first you need to give permissions now you can see in our current directory only three batch script files right there's no abc.txt file so it will output no there's no file here let's run it okay here's our topic and it is saying sorry file is not there okay so what if we create the file right okay we are creating abc.txt file here then if we ls you can see abc file is there now what if we run our batch script again yeah it's saying yes file access right okay okay we are going to learn how to use a case statement with batch scripting so we are going to first create our file i'm using the name case st then we need to edit it with nano editor first our shebang line 
then we can use our header then since this is a case statement we need to output something for user to select so first we are telling choose an option Maybe we can you head space there then we need to output our options one by one let's say option one is system uptime then we can say option two is date and time and two options are enough we can and we can give an empty line then we need to read our user's choice by assigning it to a variable so let's give the variable name a choice then we say case dollar choice in then our first option one which is which means if user says option one we are using a command for system uptime we can use uptime command with double semicolons then for the option two if user says date and time we are using date keyword then double semicolon and if user enter something other than given options we are saying invalid argument or something okay and to mark the end of our case statement we need to use the keyword ESAC then we can use an empty line and then mark the end of our script and that's it let's save it and run it okay here you can see our topic and then choose an option let's say we need system amp time and then it is giving us system of time and end of script if we run the bash script again and give second option it will say date and time okay that's it now we are going to learn how to use a for loop with bash script so first we need to create our script file let's give it a name for loop okay let's edit it with our nano editor first we need to give our shebang line and then let's give our usual header for loops and some empty line and then let's write our for loop like this for we need to use a incrementer like i and in we need to give the times we need to run our loop let's say we need to run it five times one two three four five and we need to say what we need to do and then we need to mark the end of the loop like this and finally end of script so we need to tell what we need to be done five times so let's say welcome five times right if you use it like this it will output welcome five times let's save and run it first we need to give permissions okay we have executable permissions for our follow let's run it bash follow dot sh and as you can see we can output five times our message we can modify it to find out how many times we run with the number like if we use dollar i here it will output a number and empty echo here right it is outputting five times okay that's it so now we are going to learn how to create a do while loop with bash scripts so first we need to create our script file and then we can edit it let's give our shebang line and let's output our header then an empty line so let's write our while loop like this 
then we use do keyword and we tell what we need to do after that we indicate the end of the loop and we indicate end of the script so here we need to tell we need to do something for number of times so let's create a variable called a and give it a value like one then here in while loop we can say until dollar a less than or equal to five we need to run this loop and we can say let's say hi i am number one two or three like that and then we need to increment our a value a plus plus and that's it let's save and run it let's give our permissions let's run it okay as you can see here it's running five times like hi i'm number one two three four and five and end of script okay that's it we are going to read a file with bash scripts which is very easy so before that we need to uh, create a file and read it so let's check we have this abc.txt file here uh, so let's try to look at what's inside it right we can use cat command for that abc.txt as you can see there's nothing inside our abc.txt file we need to write something to our abc.txt file so let's write our history to abc.txt file now we can execute cat command again and as you can see we have to interpret our history to our abc.txt file right so now we need to create a bash script and we can edit it with you know editor let's write shebang line so what we need to do is read the abc.txt file simply we can use cat abc.txt and that's it we can mark the end of our script also we can mark the beginning of our script like read the content of a file so let's save it and run it let's give permissions okay let's run our file as you can see this is the entire history inside our abc.txt file at the beginning it is marking the beginning of our script file read the content of the file and then at the end it is indicating end of script right okay that's it so now we are going to write a bash script that will connect a connection to a remote server so for that we need to create a script file let's give it a name like remote connection dot sh and let's edit it with our nano editor let's write our shebang line okay so we need to ping a remote server or remote destination for that we can use the ping command and we can give our ip address for now let's just give it like a name ping ip so here we need to tell how many times we need to ping that remote destination so let's say we need to ping it two times like this and that's our ip so it will ping our destination then based on that we can use a if condition to tell the user if the ping command success or not so for that let's use a if condition if if then and what we need to say and else with another echo 
and then mark the end of our if statement then a final echo and let's mark the end of the script okay so let's come up here and so here we are telling if the result of above ping command is equal to zero then we are outputting ping success message like that else we are outputting not success message like that so now we need to provide our IP address first let's use our header check connection to a remote server another header then we can give an IP address like IP is the variable and which is equal to let's say google.com here you can use an IP address or a domain name it's fine then we need to use this as dollar IP let's save and check it first we need to give the permissions to our script file then let's run it so since I'm not online it is saying that the ping not success okay now I'm online and let's try it again okay you can see it pinged Google two times and then it showed the statistics and it showed our success message and end of script right okay that's it so now we are going to write a bash script to delete all file okay first create our script let's say delete alt dot sh and let's edit it with nano editor let's write our shebang line so first we need to find them and then we need to remove them with the rm command then bash scripts and then we need to tell the time which is m time and then we are specifying how many days old which is here in 90 days and we need to tell the execution command which is remove then we need to, need to specify brackets and then backslash and a semicolon that's it then it will find and remove any specific files which are 90 days old before that we need to find out if there are files that are older than 90 days right so first we need to find it ourselves so we need to go to our directory test bash scripts by using ls we are going to list them first to see if there are files older than 90 days like this so what we are doing is here is we are finding files older than 90 days and we are listing them we are looking for files inside this bash scripts directory so it seems there are no older files in our bash script folder so here what we can do is create files with all the timestamp let's give it all the date i'm giving five days second september on 2022 time like 12 30 i mean to give that file a name like file one dot txt let's execute it okay let's create another file called file two dot txt on that same day and same time maybe if we can change the minutes here okay we have created four files now let's list them again with the find command now we have four files that have older timestamps than 90 days then let's list all the files in our directory as you can see we have our delete all the sh file and now file one two three four here now let's run our bash script so it will delete all the files that are older than 90 days list all the files here okay now you can see there are no file one two three four here right okay that's how we delete all the files and so now we are going to write a bash script to backup files in our computer 
so when we run this bash drift it will back up a certain file so for that let's create a directory in our current directory now we are in the bash script folder let's create a folder called backup and you can see it's here and then let's go inside our backup directory and maybe create a file like this and let's come back to our normal directory now what we are going to do is we are creating a dot tar file out of this backup directory and then we are using gzip to make a compressed file after that tar file then we are going to output to the terminal process finished let's create our file backup.sh and let's edit it right let's write our shebang line let's echo backup files so here we are using tar program to create a backup.tar file out of our backup folder which is inside our bash script folder and then we are telling gzip to compress that dot tar file which is backup dot tar file backup dot tar file and then we echo process finished right and also we can say end of the script if we want right let's save and try to run it right before that let's see what our files inside the directory there's a backup folder and backup script and that's all so once we run our bash script there will be a gzip file right let's run it so as you can see it is starting our script and then it is doing its process like this and then it is same process finished and end of the script now if we see what's inside there's a backup.tar.gz file right you can use this kind of a bash script to run routinely and you can save your time and effort in this example we are going to use the sleep command so for that let's create a file sleep.sh and let's edit it with nano editor first let's write our bash shebang line then we can output sleep timer and we can underline it then what we need is sleep command and how many seconds it is going to be sleep to make use of it we are going to use this sleep command inside the loop so for that we can use a for loop we can say for i in let's say five times one two three four five do sleep 20 seconds but with that we can echo something like I'm going to sleep then we can finish with for loop and 
mark the end of our script file let's save and run it so this will sleep for 20 seconds and then echo a message then sleep for 20 seconds and echo another message okay first we need to give executable permissions then we can run now file you will see after 20 seconds it will display the second message and so it will continue and that's it in this example we are going to create a, an array with batch scripts and output stored values within that array with the for loop okay let's first create our file let's say array.sh and let's edit it use our shebang line let's output our header and we can underline it as usual and then we can create our array like maybe student names within brackets within brackets we can type store names like maybe John Jessica Dwayne etc you can use maybe a number and some character combination also it's fine and then we can echo then we can use a for loop to output these values for i in we can use we can use array like this and do then echo store names one by one this way I need to mark the end of the for loop and we can mark the end of the script let's save and run it okay as you can see bash script arrays can take different kind of values like numbers and characters along with strings okay that's it in this example we are going to use bash functions so for that uh, we can use an existing code inside our function and call it back we can use our bash array script and modify it as a function here we can read our array.sh file and assign its content to functions.sh file so when we open our functions.sh file with nano editor you can see that all the things with the array.sh file is written inside this one so we can modify our header as batch functions and then we can move this code inside the function let's say our function name as welcome and a space two brackets and open curly braces then here we can close curly braces so now all this code works inside the function right so here we are not calling the function without calling the function let's save and try to run it first we need to give permission to our function dot sh file then we can run it so as you can see here it only indicate the beginning and the end of the script file but it does not execute things inside the function why is that because we haven't called the function we only declare the function right so we need to call the function like down here you can call it just like that welcome and what if we call the function twice right welcome and 
me be again let's save and run it what happens is that this function execute three times because we have called it inside our script three times hope you got the idea here we are going to use string concatenation with bash scripts which is very easy we can create our file we can give it like concat.sh and let's edit it let's write our shebang line then write our header string concatenation we can underline it as usual then after an empty line we can create different variables like let's say someone like john lives in usa right so we can slice this sentence into three words like john is the name lives in part is like the middle part of the sentence and usa is the place right we can give variable names like person equals john middle part of our sentence like this lives in the country because we will say like this and simply we can concatenate the string like we can assign these values to another variable concat equals as a string we can say dollar person dollar middle dollar country and that's it all we need to do is echo this fourth variable in a string like concatenated string dollar concat and that's it we can mark the end of our script file let's save and run it okay we can run file like this as you can see simply it is concatenating our different strings to one sentence okay that's it in this example we are going to count the length of a string so for that we can create a file like this and we can edit our length.sh file let's write our header length of a string and then we can underline it as usual all you need to do is assign a sentence to a variable like let's say str equals some word or sentence like let's say a b c d e f g which is seven letters long right then we declare our length variable and we put our str and tell it to count it like this inside curly brackets and then it will output the length of our str length of the string is dollar length it should output length of the string is dash seven right let's mark the end of our script as you can see it just output seven if you are more interested in playing with this kind of things you can ask a user to enter some string and then you can count and output its length too okay that's it now we are going to learn how to find and replace a string with bash scripts so for that we need to first create our script file let's give it a name like find and replace and then let's edit it with our nano editor okay first we need to write our shebang line then let's queue a header now to replace words in a string we need to use three variables first one should be the string we have a sentence or something then we need a, a word that need to be replaced and also we need the replacement for that right so let's say our string is hello everyone then let's say we need to replace everyone so what's our replacement we can say hello world instead right okay so now we can output our replaced sentence we need to use the dollar sign and curly braces inside curly braces we need to first insert our string then we need to say replaced variable and then with the forward slash here we need to tell the replacement which is dollar replacement okay let's mark the end of our script and let's save and run it so as you can see our final replaced works and it replaced hello everyone with hello world and that's it so now we are going to check if a file is there 
on a certain directory. For that, we are going to use a if statement and a if flag. Okay, first we need to uh, look into our directory. As you can see, we have these files and folders here. So we can give a certain file name and check if it is there. And if it is not there, we can create it with the bash script. So let's create our script file. Let's give it a name like exist.sh and let's edit with nano editor. Give our shebang line. Here's our header. Okay, we can write a simple if, if statement like this. To check the status of a file, we can give the give a flag like this and we can check if file is there there goes the file name and if the file is there we can do certain things and if this file is not there we can do certain things and we can mark the end of our if statement and then we can mark the end of our script okay here we can ask from the user for a given file name right uh, let's tell you sir we can say that to state the file name you need to find like this then when the user enters the file name we can read it to a variable like file then we need to use that variable here if f dollar file if the file is there we can say your file is there maybe we can say your file dollar file is there else we can say your file is not there then we can say we are creating the file and then we can create that specific file like this touch dollar file and then when the user runs the script again he will find the file there okay let's save this and run it right so it is asking us to state the file name so we can give a file name that is not in here like let's say xyz dot txt so it is saying your file is not there and we are creating the file and end of script okay so if run the bash script again and we say that we need to find the xyz dot txt it is saying your file xyz dot txt is there right okay that's it so in this example we are going to get some of our system details by writing a bash script for that we can create our script file as sys details and we can then edit it with our nano editor first we need to write our shebang line and then let's say system details okay Let's use an underline line. Now here we are going to get some system details like system uptime, current date, and disk space details. To get the disk space details, we can use the df-h command. And to get the current date, we can use the date command. And to get the system uptime, we can use the uptime command. And then we can mark the end of our script. We can add headers like disk space, current date, and system uptime. Okay, let's save and run it. Okay, as you can see, it is outputting our header system details, and then it says disk space details like this, and then 
or current date is here and system uptime is here we can format our outputs in more convenient ways if you want we can add some dashes like this to partition our outputs okay let's run it again okay now you can see our dashes separate our output and that's it we are going to count number of files inside the directory so for that first we need to create a directory so i'm here and here i'm going to create a new directory called count and i'm going to go inside it and then as you can see there's no the files here so i'm going to create few files like file one file one two three and four and now we can see there are four files so inside this directory i'm going to create my bash script touch count.sh and then let's edit it write our shebang line and then we can echo count files and we can underline it as usual and a empty line and then we can ask question how many files are here in the current direct okay then let's write our command which is ls dash l a strict mark a pipe then wc dash l this will give files in our current directory and then let's mark it like this and then we can list all the files here so that we can see it ourselves then let's give a space and then mark the end of our script okay let's save and run it okay it's saying count files and how many files are there there are five files as we can see there are three four five files and end of a script and that's it and thank you for watching